What's going on guys? Been JK Gear and Gadgets. And I realize it's been a long time since I've done a walk around in my Jeep talking about all the mods I'm running and just overall specs of the Jeep. Uh, I've had a lot of updates since my last video and I noticed a lot of people in the comments are asking questions about the Jeep. So this video, I'm going to do walk around, show you guys all the mods I've done to the Jeep and then at the end of it, talk about some of the future mods, what I have in my garage, you know, sitting around waiting to be installed and then overall future like build plans for the Jeep. But let's go ahead and get started. Look what I'm running on my Jeep. We'll start off with the basics. It's a 2010 Rubicon six speed transmission. Uh, I currently have right around 106,000 miles on it. So it is a 3.8, definitely not the most powerful engine, but it does the job. So let's uh, talk about what suspension I'm running. It's actually a mix of a lot of different companies. Um, the front springs and the rear springs are the metal cloak four and a half inch dual rate coils with the Bilstein 5160s in the front, which are the remote reservoirs, and in the rear, just the standard 5160s, but we'll make our way back there shortly. Sway bar links are rock crawler, quick disconnects, have adjustable control arms, which you can tell down here, which are Rubicon Express. Um, and as you can tell, this one's actually not supposed to have a bend in it. Um, so I'll be replacing that one shortly, probably with a different brand. Uh, these joints didn't seem to last very long. Was not very impressed with these uh, Rubicon Express uh, control arms. I am also running the Metal Cloak drop brackets. Um, so with the drop brackets mixed with the adjustable control arms, awesome mixture, great highway uh, you know, handling. I can set my caster really good and uh, really position the axle however I want it. As for the front track bar, I'm running the JKS. It's done me pretty well, but I'm also gonna replace that. I'll talk about that here later. But JKS adjustable track bar. I do have the Rubicon, uh, since I have the Rubicon, I have the, uh, I used to have the electronic sway bar disconnect, but I changed it out to an Evo no limits. So I just turned this knob to disconnect my front sway bar. All right, back here at the rear, like I said, we have the uh, metal cloak coils, Bilstein 5100 shocks, I'm running the Synergy shock brackets to raise them out, raise them up and out of the way. Another JKS track bar and uh, Rubicon Express adjustable control arms. So, as you can tell, it's definitely like a mix of different brands for the suspension, but it works for me. I'm happy with it. Four and a half inch lift is probably as high as you'd really want to go, um, especially if you plan on running 37s or 40s. Four and a half is more than enough. But let's talk about axles since we're down here. So the rear is the Rubicon 44, geared to 513 gear ratio. Also have the uh, factory electronic locker. Have a G2 axle truss, um, TerraFlex um, track bar bracket right there as you can see. I'm running the 10 factory chromoly shafts and yeah, that's it for the rear. So I mean, I'd say it's probably a minimum for my 40s. I had this set up with my 37s and I could beat the piss out of it without really breaking anything. I do have bent flanges every once in a while and I'm sure that now with the 40s I'll have bent flanges even more. But good thing about 10 Factory is they warranty them so it just sucks sitting here changing them all the time. But that's the rear axle, let's go forward. Up here at the front axle I'm running the Dynatrack Pro Rock 44. Super beefy for a 44. Um, inside 513 gears, ARB locker and uh, RCV shafts so this definitely should hold the 40s um, you know to a certain extent the weak part is gonna be the ring and pin in in the uh, you know in the actual 44 because the RCVs those should hold up to the 40s fine the actual housing of the Dynatrack is incredibly strong so the ring and pinion is gonna be my weak point um, but I do plan on upgrading the axle soon so stay tuned for that steering as you can tell I have the Synergy drag link flipped to do high steer as well as the high steer uh, bracket for the track bar. I'm running a steel rough stuff tie rod that bends incredibly easily even though it is heavy duty, um, but it works for me. I'd like to go aluminum in the future, just haven't had time. Um, for my hydro assist, I'm running the AGR rock ram. Actually, I actually had to make some mods for this. Uh, to this because I got this uh, used. It was the 8 inch stroke um, which is too long for the JK so I took it apart 
uh, I had a uh, spacer machined to limit it internally. So I have that and the lines go up to my uh, I'll try to show you PSC steering box. Oh, where is it? Up there. Yep. <sighs> so yeah, I'm not, not I'm running the factory pump and no cooler and it hasn't given me any issues so far. So that's it for steering. All right, so let's talk about the exterior, a little bit about the body. So front bumper is a motorbuilt hatchet. Great looking bumper made in the USA, super heavy, heavy duty. It is a frame chop, so it tucks into the body a lot closer and you also re get really good ground clearance. So your approach angle is great, high ground clearance, and it's super beefy. Um, on that, I have the Warren Xeon 10S uh, with synthetic line, Factor 55, uh, fair lead and flat link running the uh, Sun Pie fogs inside the bumper as well as Sun Pie LED headlights. The hood, uh, sock hood, but I'm running the uh, Highline hood louver. Uh, got it color matched to the Jeep, turned out perfect. The thing I really like about the Highline uh, louvers is that you don't have all the bolts going through like the other brands. I um, mean, you can see if you zoom in closely, but they're, uh, they're studs that are pressed, they're not, not pressed through, but they're uh, studs underneath is where you secure it to the hood. So you get the nuts underneath. It just really gives it a clean finished look, I think. Um, I'm running the uh, JL hood bumps as well as the JL hood latches, which most of you know, it's been pretty much everything that I'm talking about, I've done a video on or review but I'm just trying to do a whole video talking about all the new mods they have in the Jeep, you know, and then really help answer any questions that you guys have in your head. I've had a lot of questions lately about certain stuff I'm running. Um, fenders, they are MCE. Uh, these are the narrow version. They are flexible and lightweight. The whole Jeep's dirty, I should've washed it before this video. Oh well, they're meant to be dirty. But I mean, the good thing I like about them is they are flexible, so if you, you know, bump in a tree, it's just gonna bend, it's not gonna crack. Uh, and like I said, they're lightweight, so you know, once you add a bunch of steel, it starts getting heavy. So it's nice to save weight where you can, even lighter than aluminum. Um, have the Ronin Factory 50 cal short antenna, rigid radiance pods. I uh, think I like. <laughs> oh shit! All right, we're gonna leave that in the video. <laughs> the thing I like about these is the backlight. You can either turn it red. Uh, you know, it's a dual position switch, so red backlight or white uh, bright light. So that's pretty cool. My tube doors are the Stein Jager, Stein Jager, Stein Jager, however you want to say it. Uh, running their tube doors. Uh, the actual design of the tube doors is pretty cool. Very simple, I like it. But just this latching, this pin, kind of cheesy. Sometimes it's hard to get out. They do make a new style, it has like a push button, but they're like $30 a piece. I really don't want to spend that. Um, so, but I mean, if I was to buy them again, I'd get them with the new pins. As for the interior, nothing crazy of the Smitty Belt seat covers, the neoprene, got them from a great, great deal. They were used, I uh, got them all, you know, front and rear, I think for like 80 bucks, so couldn't pass it up. Running that little uh, tire print console thingy. I have the Cobra uh, 75, what, w, WX, blah, 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 I don't know. Cobra 75 is what I always call it. I really like this CB just because it's a handheld, the mic's in it, uh, all the controls are right there so you don't have to worry about a big bulky box. Um, also have the grab bars and like I said, sp six speed manual transmission. My sunshade is the Alien Sunshade, red, and I uh, like it a lot. I had a black one before, but I really like the red. It really ties into the theme of the Jeep. I did take off my factory roll bar and I have a video on that on all the spots you need to touch up and paint. Gear bags, one of my right line gear bags. That's where I keep all my recovery gear and stuff, you know, my air hoses, all that stuff, random tools in there. This rear box that you see here is the diabolical slipstream. I still need to make a video on this, but security, you know, once the Jeep's locked, you can't get in here and it also adds an extra layer of storage. So you can use tie downs, put a cooler up there, camping gear, all that stuff, whatever. Uh, rear tail lights are, uh, I think they're Sun Pie. I don't know, I got them on Amazon. Uh, actually got them for a Christmas gift, so didn't really have a say. 
but I think my dad got them for me and they've held up really well. I like them. Um, fender liners, I forgot to say that. These are the DV8 rear liners as well as my fronts are the DV8 inner fender liners. I'm also running the DV8 hydraulic bump stops. Man, I'm going all over the place with this video. Sorry guys. If this is the first time watching my videos or new to the channel, I am all over the place, but I usually try to put out some pretty good content, so we'll see. We'll get back to the wheels and tires. Don't worry about that. Running the Motobuilt uh, Tag Delete because I really don't want to have a 40 or a 37 hanging off the back. So, did the Tag Delete. Um, little mall rated badge. It's from Badge Glow and it actually glows at night. Pretty cool. I painted my door handle inserts. I got those on Amazon. They were black. I sandblasted and painted them. Rear bumper is a Motobuilt uh, crusher with uh, cube lights recessed in and I uh, used some of that lens tint just so they didn't stand out like a sore thumb. But really nice bumper. It's not a frame chop so I can still tow. You know, it keeps the factory hitch because I do have a little off-road trailer that I use. But I really like the lines on this bumper and it has all those holes for a high lift mounting point. Um, what else? I guess we'll get down to the wheels and tires. Tires are the new Yokohama Geolanders. The uh, they're XMT G005s. Uh, really aggressive tread pattern. These are 40s. 40 uh, by 13 and a half on a 17 inch rim. Speaking of the rims or wheels, I'm running the Raceline Monster Beadlocks. Um, they've held up really well. I mean, the rings are chewed up for sure, but I mean, they're a great wheel. Had no problems with them and they, you know, this combo, you can air down as low as you want and it's just, it's a free good beast off-road. Let's see what else, guys. Got my little switch column here. Got yeah, that for the white lights, the pillar lights. That's the backlight red. My rock lights. Compressor and front locker. Here on the tailgate, I got the tailgate drop down panel um, from Mo Molly Platform Solutions. And it's actually pretty cool. Pull the pins. And it drops down to a tailgate table. Uh, installs pretty easy on that. Of course, got a bunch of stickers. But it comes in handy because I, uh, I keep a lot of stuff in these bags. So it doubles as storage as well as a panel for when I'm out camping. So back here, uh, my recovery gear. I uh, have my Rock Fab Off-Road Soft Shackle as well as their 20-foot uh, kinetic rope. So I always keep those in the back corner of the Jeep. I actually need to take them out sometime and wash them because they're starting to get pretty dusty. But by far some of the uh, best recovery gear I've ever used. All right, so under the hood, I have the Odyssey Extreme AGM battery, and it has not let me down yet. Running a cheap $40 cold air intake with a water guard uh, over the filter that I got on Amazon. I have a video on the setup, pretty happy with it, uh, but nothing else really special. I have my uh, ARB air compressor over there for my locker, and so I can air up. But under the hood, that's it, other than the super powerful 3.8. That was a joke. As you can tell, I don't have the factory muffler. I actually have a MagnaFlow, uh, and I did it myself, a little DIY, DIY, just put a muffler underneath there and took out everything else and then just rerouted the exhaust coming out here. I have a video on that, sounds pretty good, I think, and it was definitely a cheap mod, so I'm happy with it. It was under, uh, under 100 bucks, so you can't, can't beat that. But I think that's pretty, it, pretty much it for the walk around of the Jeep. Oh, and of course, don't forget the awesome JK Gear and Gadget sticker. So, let me go show you guys a few things that I have in the garage that I'm working on. So that's pretty much it for all the mods that you can see. One other thing I'll add is that I am running the Center, uh, Center Force Clutch Kit. So I got their clutch and their heavy flywheel. Uh, I do like their heavy flywheel kit because it really adds to that like low-end grunt. It really doesn't want to stall out on the trails or on the street. It's a pretty good upgrade. You do notice a little bit of loss of like how fast your RPMs can climb just because just you know your engines turning a heavier flywheel but once the engines going it doesn't want to stop it's pretty cool 
Uh, I can talk about that later in a video if you guys want. But overall, I'm extremely happy with how this Jeep performs. Actually, I haven't really taken it off-road on the 40s yet. Those are pretty new. But this thing handled the 37s perfectly. Never really broke anything on the axles. So I'm excited to see how these 40s will do off-road and how the Jeep will turn them. On the street, they've been doing pretty good. But uh, I need to take a trip off-road and really test them out. And all these oil stains you're seeing is not from that. It's from this guy. <laughs> it's just one of, everybody's probably like, oh my God, Ben, fix your leaks. It's on the XJ, you can fix a leak and another one will pop up tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead into the garage and let's talk about some of the mods that I plan on doing. All right, so here are some of my uh, future mods. These are actually going in real shortly that I'm making videos on, but I'll give you guys a sneak peek. This is the DCS hood light. Uh, it's actually two of them and they're supposed to go on your hood where your hood bumps are and they're lights uh, it's actually really cool they're not that much bigger than the factory bumps uh, as you can tell i mean they're pretty small but i'm actually not going to put mine there i'm going to mock one up to show you guys what it looks like but i was i've been looking for something small and compact to put on my front bumper right between the stinger and the winch and i really don't want to put any cube lights there i don't like the way it looks so I'm gonna put these small compact lights there. So stay tuned for a video on those. Got some Oxbeam um, eight pack rock lights. I do have rock lights, as you can tell, but they're pretty much just LED uh, fog lights. Um, so doing these, they're uh, remote operated through your phone so I can change all the different colors and you know, mostly you know give it that show look. But I'm gonna compare these to my rock light setup and see how they compare and uh, you know do an overall review on these uh, RGB rock lights here I have a rock crawler front track bar reason I'm doing this is because I actually got a sweet deal on this and what's over here uh, that's used but I like the rock uh, rock crawler track bar a little bit better than the JKS just because it does have heim joints so uh, you do get a little more flex and once I build my new axles uh, I'll have a little more adjustability, um, you know, from side to side uh, with the heim joints opposed to just using the bushing like the JKS. And over here, pick these up for a steal. Uh, they're used, but I got the, the rock crawler track bar and these rock crawler X Factor long arms. This is their three link. Um, I only got the arms, so I still need to get the brackets and cross member. Um, but that's no big deal. I'll get that and then hopefully get these on soon enough uh, Reason I went with these is because like I said earlier. I did bend one of my uh, Rubicon Express Lower control arms. I was like well, let's go ahead and upgrade to long arms and I found these and got them for a steal so I'm gonna pick up the uh, The brackets from these pretty soon and then get to that project. Um, I am gonna have to uh, do some exhaust work uh, because where these brackets sit is right where the uh, crossover pipe is and the catalytic converters need to be moved up. So I'm still debating it. I might try to do that exhaust work myself, or I might just suck it up and take it to an exhaust shop and have them uh, do it professionally on the Jeep, just because I'm not, I haven't done too much exhaust work, you know, in the past. I've done, you know, mufflers and stuff, but nothing crazy like, you know, making bins and moving the cats and everything. But super excited about these. The Jeep's gonna be awesome with long arms and it's gonna flex like crazy with the three link. So stoked about that I'll do the rear long arms eventually but up here I have the Dana 60 front out of a Super Duty and I have the Sterling rear from the Super Duty uh, in my shed out back I wanted to put these on or start working on these a long time ago but as you guys know building one tons is expensive so I really haven't made too much headway I cut a lot of the brackets off cut the cast here uh, I still need to go down and shave down it you know get it nice and smooth um, so this is a project in the works, especially now that I have 40s, it's really pushing me more to work on these a lot more often now. But my next step is buy, uh, to buy the Swap Truss. Motoboat has one and it actually looks pretty cool. Uh, good price and has, you know, diff cover, diff cover tie-in, all that stuff. So hopefully I'll be making videos on the one ton swap soon. I'm still debating if I want to do the rear Sterling, uh, which matches this, uh, you know the same truck that this came out of or find a 14 bolt rear from a Chevy um, 
So I'm debating that, but first I want to build this front axle, get that good to go, and then worry about the rear. So those are the upgrades that are waiting. Um, like I said, those three first, install that, then the long arms, and then down the road, do the one tons. So, uh, and then after that, who knows, I'm gonna want more power, and that's, you know, that's a whole nother debate within itself. Do I supercharge my 3.8, or do I save up and throw an LS in it? I don't know, but one of the two is gonna be happening down the road, especially after the one tons, because I'm gonna need more power to push those huge axles. But that's about it for the future upgrades. Everything else, I mean, I'm sure I'll do more little bolt-on mods um, here and there. But as for the big stuff, long arms, one tons, and I still have to figure out what uh, rear long arms I want to run. I don't know. I really don't want to do a three link in the rear just because it almost seems like there's too much uh, sway. So I might do a four link. Um, I don't know. To be determined. But that's it for the future upgrades so uh you know stay tuned for all the other videos i love making these uh love making videos so i hope you guys enjoy watching them but that's it for the future upgrades all right guys thanks for watching the video i hope you enjoyed the walk around of my jeep like always if you have any questions about what i'm running or anything else in general throw it in the comments i'll be more than happy to uh either make a video about it or just help you help you out right there in the comments so like always, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, really close to hitting 10k uh, subscribers, and I'm excited about that, because then I can make the posts, um, the community, I forget what they call it, community chat, uh, so I can make posts, updates, uh, talk about videos, upcoming videos and stuff, so I'm super excited about that. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and go ahead and uh, hopefully put some of those other things on the Jeep soon, but uh, until then, take care.